A fast-breaking schedule as Donald Trump is holding meetings, as I said, with top Republicans. And right now, we're told, he's with Senate GOP leaders. He met last hour with House Republican leadership. And before that, the day began with Donald Trump meeting separately with RNC Chairman Reince Priebus and House Speaker Paul Ryan. As you may know, the two men have had some differences as of late. Ryan just last week said he's not ready to back the presumptive Republican nominee. And yet, just minutes ago... Speaker Ryan, while some saying differences may remain, calling the meeting a good start. Watch. This is our first meeting. I was very encouraged with this meeting. Um, but this is a process. It takes a little time. You don't put it together in 45 minutes. Uh, so that is why um, we had, like I said, a very good start. And it's very important that we don't uh, fake unifying, we don't pretend unification, that we truly and actually unify so that we are full strength in the fall. I don't want us to have a fake unification process here. I want to make sure that we really truly understand each other and that we are committed to the conservative principles that make the Republican Party, that built this country. And again, I, I, I'm very encouraged. Speaker Ryan has not yet formally endorsed Donald Trump. And Scott, the entire time you said, what a joke. Why? This is why I, I am sort of done with the Republican Party. I, I'm, I'm fed up with the way they handle every situation. They can't stop s shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Trump is the nominee, period. You get behind him. If this was the Democrats and it was Hillary or Bernie, it's over. Everybody's lockstep in with that person. But we, we have to make a big event. We have to make a big stink out of it. It just, it, it just, you do this stuff behind closed doors. You don't do this so the American people can see how ununified you are. You're a big shot, Paul Ryan. I get it. You don't have to go and make a big grandstand and try to get Trump to come to you. You got to go to him. He's the guy now. Mm. And, and I'm, I, I, don't, I hope this puts an end to it. And, and by the way, I don't think, uh, this is a fine line for Donald Trump, who I, I think is great, by the way. Does he want this endorsement? Does he want this? Because he's been so anti-establishment mm -hmm. the whole time here. Does he want to get into bed with these people? And I don't know. I mean, that, he's a smarter guy than I, so he'll make that decision. But and not, just, just cut the crap and, and get behind the guy. You know, Scott brings up a good point in terms of the optics of this for yeah. Donald Trump being, you know, so outside Washington, if you will, and very inside today with a series of meetings. I mean, it's very sort of um, pre-presidential. And, and how all of this is going on, you might say, in terms of it. But, but the question becomes, he has to do this, doesn't he? Because he's got to get a budget through if he becomes the next president. He's got to be, I mean, there are going to be some things that he'll have to do on Capitol Hill beyond being the nominee and so on and so forth. Yeah, you're so right, Harris, because it's taking it to another level, more of a macro view about what's going to happen going forward. Yes, he is the nominee, but he is running for president of the United States. And should he win and succeed and defeat Hillary Clinton, he's going to have to govern. And part of that is working with these teams to be able to put legislation forward, to be able to work in lockstep in terms of things that you want to block or you want to get forward. So this was important. I liked some of what Paul Ryan had to say, and I have great you know, respect for him. I think he's you know, very bright, a star in the Republican Party. I didn't love him coming out and saying you know, the remarks about uh, Mr. Trump being, you know, because he was the presumptive nominee. However, today I think he tried to walk that back a little bit and mm -hmm. show that there was some positive without just saying, yes, I endorsed him right away, but let's move forward. With it. You know what, what Donald Trump did, though, Julie? And, and I would have to say, as Democrats watching from the other side of the political aisle, you must just be salivating, saying, OK, are we learning how not to do this? I, I, I'm not salivating because, quite honestly, I think we need two strong parties in this country. I'm not salivating. What I see is potentially the demise of the Republican Party as we know it. I have a lot of sympathy for what you're saying, Scott. There are a lot of people who are Republicans who are saying, we can't fathom this mm -hmm. on both sides of this equation, the people who are never Trump and the people who are so pro-Trump and hate what Paul Ryan's doing, I don't know that it's good for our democracy to have a weakened Republican Party the way it is now. Having said all that, I have a lot of sympathy for Paul Ryan. He is a Jack Hemp disciple mm -hmm. who spent the last 20 years building the Republican Party on a set of principles. They may not be principles I agree with, but they're a set of principles nevertheless. Here comes Donald Trump, who in many ways has blown up those principles. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for the party, I let people in the party decide. But if you're Paul Ryan, you've got to worry about your House majorities. You want to strengthen those House majorities. You have to make sure that you have a majority to deal with the next president. 
and Donald Trump's not making it easy for him. Yeah, and what I meant by across the political aisle, you guys haven't gotten it together either. No, <laughs> that's where I was no, going. But Jack's right about that. We have a better way of getting it together when it's all over than I think well, we see today. We'll see. I mean, yeah. the anti-Hillary uh, among the the Bernie Sanders votes. Yeah, voters, and, and, and I, I think we don't know what that's the Republicans look like. will figure that out very quickly. That it, it's better for them to squash these skirmishes before they turn into full conflagrations, so Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump can keep tag teaming Hillary. That's definitely best for them. What I see here, though, is uh, it, two people so concerned about maintaining their own brands. Paul Ryan mm -hmm. wants to be president one yep. day. Donald Trump wants to be president in a few months. And so what they're doing is really posturing and gathering as much land as they possibly can for themselves. And I think most people don't care about that. Because you know what they're not doing? They don't have the best interests of people in this country who are definitely hurting. And that's why those messages like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump's where they overlap are resonating with people in this So country. Scott, what was interesting today is after the comments had been made uh, Speaker Ryan took a few questions, and one of our producers asked, Chad Pergram asked, uh, you know, it sounds like the only thing you guys are agreeing on is, is going against Hillary Clinton. I mean, is there any other area? It's interesting. We have a lot going on. We had jobs mm -hmm. numbers come out, uh, and, and they were anemic. We've had a lot going on in this country. It seemed like maybe a missed opportunity for Speaker Ryan to stand up and say, well, here are all the other areas that we agree. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's my that's my point. But they don't want to come together. It's it's always seems to be. It's never about us. It's always about them and how, holding on to their pair. And, and, and Ken, you just said it. It's they. It, it's people are hurting out there. Can we at least figure out a way? And again, I say me, and I heard what you say, Kimberly, and I kind of agree with what you said early. But you, can we do this behind closed doors so we can fix what needs to be fixed? Come together, beat Hillary Clinton and whomever, or Bernie Sanders. It's not going to be Bernie Sanders, but. And, and, and <laughs> Don't tell Bernie that. No, I know. I Bernie's the I, last one not to realize that, be, by the he'd way. Be, he'd be a ball to have uh, as the nominee. But um, anyway, just just get this over with and, and stop making it about you and your power right. and what you need. It's about, it's about the country. Right. It was interesting to see Donald Trump do exactly what he said he was going to do, kind of the art of the deal, be willing to walk away from the table. Yeah. Love the guy.